the most voice I've had in the last few days. Um, and I'm very grateful for the amplification that we've got going at this point because it's going to allow me to get through, although maybe I'm not meant to. And I'm grateful that the Sunday school class wrapped up last week. <clears throat> so. And now for the second scripture reading for this morning. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, none of your relatives have this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. Zechariah asked for a writing tablet, and he wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately, Zechariah's mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all their neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. And all who heard them pondered them and said, What then will this child become? For indeed the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. God has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus God has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered her holy covenant. The oath that she swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve her without fear and holiness and righteousness before her all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. May God's blessing guide the meditations of our hearts and the words of our lips may it flow through the experiences of Scripture and life on this day. <clears throat> you don't really appreciate just how much you use your voice in any particular profession until you don't have a voice to work from. You don't really fully appreciate the irony of it when you're looking ahead, months ahead, and this text comes up in the lectionary, and you go, oh yeah, you know, it's Zechariah, the angel came, and he, you know, he believed, but he didn't believe, and so he, he was muted for over nine months. He could not speak. His job, as the priestly class, was to, according to rotation, go up to Jerusalem, and lead worship. Whether he was leading a community of faith in worship, whether he was with an individual, whether he was in the house of God, just him and God, he was to be in worship. In worship, generally speaking, involved words. To go into the house of worship and to be unable to speak.
speak, to verbalize. So I don't know if for nine months he didn't do his job, or if there were other tasks. Perhaps in that period of solitude, when he could not utter a mumbling word, maybe Elizabeth had a great time with it, I don't know, it's, you know. Maybe in those nine months, when he could not fill the awkward, empty spaces with his own voice, he was able to receive something else. One thing he did receive early on before he was even muted was the name for the child. We have shortened it to John from the Greek, but the full Hebrew is God is gracious. A gracious God that sees fit to mute someone whose work relies on their voice that they might learn maybe to be still a little bit more, to sit and be with God and to sit and be with others, to be fully in the moment that is around them without the urge to fill that space with their own talking, with the radio, with the television set, with whatever little device that might have been available or might be available. To just be in a place where you are stuck with your own thoughts and the thoughts of God. Because that's part of opening the door. The scripture says that the spirit came upon Zechariah when her, his mouth was finally opened and he spoke this prophecy. That's the translation we have. It's actually pretty poor. The spirit of God came upon him and he prophesied. The words themselves are the prophecy, the act. Speaking is not the prophecy in the sense of the words that are delivered. It is the words of God that flow through. And sometimes they're not spoken. Sometimes they're enacted in simple, gracious, and loving ways. But Zechariah spoke. He spoke. A priest who has been pent up for nine months, he had lots of words, I'm sure, that he wanted to share. But in this moment, what he shared was driven by the Spirit. And he talked about what God had done, what God was doing, and he talked about the hope of what will be. He envisioned a transformation that is grounded in the prophets of Scripture in the Hebrew Bible. And he envisioned something that would be transformative. And that's what John ended up being. Grounded in the Scripture and yet something else transformative. The vision that the Spirit gave to Zechariah when he finally spoke out of this, this moment of grace. Those words that become images for us, connecting with the images of prophets like Isaiah and Ezekiel and Joel and others who speak of God sweeping over this creation and restoring it to where it should be. <clears throat> because God is gracious. And so in this season of Advent, as we are so close to Christmas, imagine calling text support this close to Christmas. This close to Christmas, in this season, I am reminded in this moment of 
the silence. But not the silence that is the new fallen snow kind of thing, if you've experienced it, but the silence that comes when I am not capable of filling the voids with my own words. The silence that opens the possibilities to God with us. And those gaps, those moments when I'm not distracted by anything else or seeking to distract others with my own wisdom. That God may come in and that God may flow through. And we might, we might catch a glimpse again of the transformation that has started and that is happening and that is to come. Thanks be to God and amen. Thank you.